Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Zodcast on Monday night, this special edition. And if I could only get back to the chat group that I just had up. Um, here we go. Good seeing you, my friend. Jerome from Belgium in that beautiful town in Belgium. What was the name of your town again, Jerome? I forgot. I did, I did look it up and uh, beautiful, man, that church, everything in that, that Belgian town. You're not too far from uh, Bastogne that was famous for uh, World War II, a heavy battle. It looks like you're not, it, looking at the map, Jerome, you're like, I don't know, maybe 30, 45 minutes away from Bastogne where uh, 101st Airborne got down and dirty during the demise of uh, Adolf, I know I'll, I know I'll mispronounce it, but it's Boraining, or it's a, it looks like my nephew's name is Bo B E A U. It's like Boraining, or I mean, the way you say it is a local is it's far better. I mean, I'm sure I'm butchering it. I can't even say that the way that the uh, that the French do there in, in uh, southern Belgium. Yes, yeah, Bastogne. So like, like 45 minutes, maybe? I noticed that was pretty close. Man, that'd be so fun to visit. And go check out your little town and whatever's left of Bastogne. Maybe they go with a metal detector, find all kind of, who knows what with a metal detector over there. All kind of crazy stuff. I'm just letting some people come on as they get the, uh, the notification and getting some of these slides up. Patty is in the house. You got out of jury duty. That's good. I see some more people are popping on. Hello. Well, I'm not, not, well, sort of writing a new book. Uh, you know, I've gotten so much material from Tony. Hey, Patty. Tony's given me so much material. There's probably enough to get a book out of. And I told Tony I just too wiped out to do another book. I mean, it takes a lot out of you. And there's a lot going on with the existing books. Like, all of a sudden, Ted Braden is a really hot commodity. I got a text from a friend that seems, oh, why is Ted Braden heating up so much? <laughs> um you know, why was I putting a picture of Ted Braden on Facebook and Instagram and can't reveal that now, but there's a reason Ted Braden's heating up big time. So uh, if anybody doesn't like Ted Braden as a DB Cooper suspect, you may regret that <laughs> pretty soon. That's all I can say. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, Tony sent me a lot of good stuff. I mean, I have some stuff that I found later that's not even in the book. You know, when the original book was written, I had no idea about Paradise. I uh, had no idea Cheney was in the Air Force. Had no idea Don Cheney went to the same little tiny college as Paul Avery. Averly is a call him, and we'll call him tonight, back in 1952 and 1953. And, of course, we're going to talk about, yes, Ted Burdett Braden. Actually, <laughs> I can think of uh, Ted is the man, Uncle Jim. Ted is the man, and Ted is heating up big time. I mean, there could be something going on behind the scenes with old Ted B. And uh, that, that makes me excited. Uh, but uh, the Zodiac stuff is heating up at the same time. I mean, it's great. Uh, all this stuff, because people share with me different things and love getting all the different comments. Heard from uh, Bill, uh, a truck driver. Uh, thanks for uh, reaching out, Bill. I don't know if you're on tonight, but thanks for uh, what you do and keeping the trucks rolling. We see how important that is. I mean, if, if the trucks aren't rolling, nothing's getting done. And that's another segue from Ted Braden, who, of course, was a long haul trucker. And, uh, Thank God for our truckers, man. The, the truckers are huge. And without them, we have nothing. We have no supplies. Nothing gets your gas doesn't get delivered. No matter what it costs, we're not going to get that gas if we don't have guys to take the, take the gas from where it comes from to our gas stations. Um, Hello from, you're in Houston? Really? So am I. Read your book about the Yuba County Five and loved it. Great. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, I don't know if you heard yet. If you've listened before, though. Cruise Dude, uh, look out for Mopac Audio. Or if you're on Instagram, look for uh, Yuba County 5 Mopac Audio podcast coming out February 24th, which, of course, the anniversary date when the Yuba County 5 went missing. 
and that is going to be the end all and be all for Yuba County Five. It's going to get down and dirty into a ton, a ton of detail. I'm part of it, uh, a smaller part of it, but it, it's got uh, Tony Doug Wright. Um, Shannon that's putting that together has done so much research with her team with uh, Mopac Audio into the Yuba County Five. She uncovered stuff that I had never seen. Tony had never seen. My editor has never seen uh, old film footage of the Forest Service trailer from Yuba County Five. That's what, it's the only known what, what if you get a still of that colored photograph of the uh, Forest Service trailer where they found Ted Weir's body in Yuba County Five. So man, fantastic stuff. That they that they did with that podcast, and uh, of course it's a you know it's a podcast, but they also have some images and stuff they found that'll probably be on the Instagram and uh, some other social media. But that's February twenty fourth. Yeah, Mopac Audio, uh, Yuba County Five is going to be awesome. I think that's really going to put the case, uh, get it out there more than it's ever ever been with that. I mean, and Motor Trend recently did a show on it. I was I got a small part that didn't get on because my audio got screwed up, but. Uh, Tony Doug Wright was on that, and so was Sean Kel Williams, who's from uh, Yuba City, who's you know his family knew some of the families, uh, you know, the, of the victims and stuff. And uh, Sean's part on the Motor Trend episode, uh, Motor Trend TV Yuba County Five episode was really good. I recommend that if you have uh, if you can get Motor Trend TV, or you can also get that on Apple TV. If you look up um, autobiography motor trend tv in the yuba county five episode it's really good they did a really great job on that i had some input on it but uh didn't get to be on it because it got screwed up but uh, uh my buddy uh tony doug wright and my other buddy sean Kel williams are both in that episode and they're great and actually i'm planning on having tony doug wright as a guest on this show really soon it's definitely going to be this month for yuba county five but man tony is the walking encyclopedia of yuba county five and when we start talking it's like really detailed uh getting into it yeah the motor trick show was great i love the end i love it when sean williams does that monologue at the end it's just fantastic of course he's an actor but and he's really passionate about yuba county five being from the area and growing up hearing about it and he talks about the boys at the end of that motor train show. And it, it makes the whole, the whole show is great. But when he does his thing at the end, it just, it's, 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 it's awesome. So if you're listening, Sean, Kel Williams, shout out to you and Tony, Tony, Wright. Tony did, you know, you did a great job on that show too, Tony. I mean, standing up for that video interview, wearing your tie was just such a classy, cool move. I'm not like, anytime I ever do something like that again, if I'm ever, on uh, you know for like a little bit piece of a show like that i'm gonna do what you did i'm gonna wear a tie i'm gonna stand up that was just spot on dude that was just that was great stuff so anyway coming back around hey sean i know you've been sean's been following me forever i can remember i remember the really early people like sefer and sean and you know, of course jerome's been there uh since the beginning so many people have been but anyway i've been talking to this guy who's an artist um, he's a tattoo artist. He's a metal worker. He does art sculpture type stuff and he sees things well, more artistically. And I am not an artist and I'm definitely not a mathematician. So like when it's cypher stuff, Zodiac I definitely referred to Dave Aranchak and, and, and those guys that broke the 340 and other people that know stuff like art, like, uh, drafting. I've always said that the Zodiac killer could draft and, I see, I just see that. And I've read other people like a comment I put from a lady called Mary Dom in my book who, who looked at the Zodiac stuff just as, as a graphic uh, artist, a graphic designer for a living. And she said, to me, it's obvious this person can draft and use a, a nib set, which is, you know, the, these, these points of a different pen in an engineer set where you can draw thinner lines and you can draw thicker lines. And to her, it was obvious that the Zodiac could do this. Uh, by looking at the little details that the Zodiac could do, that the Zodiac could draft, and has some artistic ability. Even Robert Graysmith, who was a comic book artist that uh, came author, you know, that's what he was a, a cartoonist at the uh, San Francisco Chronicle. That's how he knew about the Zodiac case because he was working there at the same time as Paul Avery when the crimes were happening. But that's that's what he started. Is he's a, he was a cartoonist, so he knew how to you know do the art side of it. But it it uh, you didn't miss much, Dennis. So it was obvious to me from the beginning that the Zodiac could draft from reading things from like graphic designers, other people that could draft, they could see the thick lines, 
they could see the thin lines like doing calligraphy like you do the letters like you get a calligraphy pin set and you can make the letters look that cool old you know old font way by hand you do that with nibs and thicknesses and and uh, of the pin stroke and this is what you can do that's what drafting is being able to represent things uh on paper before the computers before autocad and that's what a mechanical engineer could do to show things like pipe thickness and stuff like that different little symbols so obviously i think of a mechanical engineer uh in the not early 1970s in the mid 60s that's what you learned how to do or actually in the mid 50s you would have a draftsman set a, ni a, a nib set as they call it with those, those little points on a pen uh, that look like a fountain pen but they're thicker and thinner ones that can allow you to do thicker and thinner strokes but it's obvious to me that the zodiac could draft and it was also obvious that the zodiac was using a light table and this is just going to further illustrate it from you know this person i'm talking to his name's jason i can say that he's fine with that i'm going to give his full name and it's not me this isn't me just you know floating out ideas under other names because if they suck i'm scared no uh this is coming from someone else and just i i, I love it when people want to share their stuff and i want to do the best job of putting it out there or how they want it and so you know we talk about the zodiac ciphers having been done on a light table with graph paper on a light table and then you put the clean piece of paper over the graph paper and then when you do the symbols they're going to look totally lined up perfectly horizontally vertically uh you know somebody's got some graph paper who do we know that owns some graph paper that wrote a letter on the graph paper so yeah it's a light table and like uh, the lady i quoted in my book uh she said that you know the zodiac obviously had a engineer table or a light box or a light table where it has you know the clear glass and it, it, it lights up and this isn't something the layperson would have had in the early 70s. This is something an engineer would have had, a draftsman would have had, and, and especially at their home. You know, you might go to your work and just use the table there. But the Zodiac, I, I'm a, more than a thousand percent sure the Zodiac, wherever in his basement, doing these these um, ciphers and things, was working with the light table, including making what we're going to talk about right now is the infamous Zodiac Halloween card and and some some aspects about it but this is obviously done and i know somebody asked the question earlier oh you said you took you took drafting in high school pre-autocad so you did it the old way yeah i have a friend that did that my well actually my daughter's friend's uh father who i know fairly well he did the same thing and he's he's 52 he's my age and he went to kansas state and when he they they uh they taught him to do draft by hand and did autocad at the same time and he remembers that they were doing a church that and part of the, you know, all the the entire class had to do the do the church drawing on autocad and they selected him to do it uh to just draft it you know freehand and they were going to match up his against everybody else that did it in, in uh, cad and his his way by hand blew away everybody else that had done it in cad and he was just that good at it and it was you know that was cool so even you know a guy that's 52 learned how to do it by hand so this is definitely a guy that can draft uh, and, you know, there's just no doubt about it. Definitely a light table involved with the ciphers, with the Halloween card. There's there's so much little bitty artistry. Someone asked a question earlier that they didn't know what part of the skele skele uh, skeleton, uh, the Halloween card was done by the Zodiac and what was done by hand. Well, we're going to be talking about the inside of the card. Because to my knowledge, the only thing that Zodiac did to the outside of the Halloween card was add the pumpkin. He cut out a pumpkin and put it to the on the front of the skeleton on the on the uh, outside of the Halloween card. The inside skeleton was made by the Zodiac. That card did not come with the second skeleton inside the card. And I'll show that here. Get a little bit bigger. So you see on the left, that's how the card originally came on the inside. And on the right, the Zodiac added all this. He added uh, all three of these, these knot holes with the little moons in it. And, you know, there's there's three here. There's one inside. There's four down here. And the artist I'm talking to said there is a message here. He gave me what he believes the message is. And the message furthers here here with these three bigger looking moons or eyes. These are eyes, actually. I always think they're moons because of this crescent here. But they're eyes. These are not holes. These are eye eyeballs. And uh, these at the top and i'm not going to show how this works yet this will come later but these actually line up with the 340 cipher in two pieces because you know the 340 cipher when the guy three uh, guys broke that uh knew that it was in three different sections and the first two sections uh it was uh diagonal 
how they did that. And then there was one thing that was screwed up or the Zodiac did that they actually got lucky to figure out. And that's how they finally broke the 340, the way I understand it. And I'm not a cipher guy. I'm not, I'm the, I've always admitted that I am not the cipher guy, but the detail that went into this card is stunning. Like I said, you see no skeleton here on the left. You see the skeleton on the right. The Zodiac made this skeleton and he didn't draw it inside the card. He made the skeleton separately. And the way the artist was explaining it to me, this was done. He had a photo of something and he traced it over like um, clear transparency film over a light projector. And you would trace the photo over that. So you would have the outline of the skeleton. And then you would go in and basically with that outline, you would draw it. And if you look at the ribs and stuff, this was all drawn by the Zodiac. Uh, the person that made this car card drew this. And that's just stunning uh to make that this this skeleton didn't come from another card and then cut out and paste it in here no this is original this was made this was drawn this is someone with some artistic ability that can do things uh, with a fine pen and you see it says 14 it also says 14 on the outside of the card that means something in terms of um what the zodiac was trying to say how many you know things you count stuff like that and we'll get i'm going to get into that more later and probably in, in some more episodes but this was proposed to me by the artist, and this has been out there. This isn't a new, uh, from what we know, a new find of what I'm gonna what I'm gonna say here. But this has been proposed before. He also believes it, and I do too. Now that the skeleton here is representing Paul Stein, of course, the the uh, Zodiac victim from the Presidio, Paul Stein, that was murdered um, in 1969. And I've seen people propose that before that this is Paul Stein, and I'll put this up on the screen. Here's a, this is bad. If you have kids in the room, don't look at this. Cause this is, this is uh, obviously a photo of cab driver, Paul Stein, uh, you know, the, after he was killed by the Zodiac in the Presidio in October of 69. And you can see, I put this, I turned the car upside down on the right. So you can kind of see the uh, skeletons hand here on the left hand side. You see how you can't see Paul Stein's thumb sticking out. And this, this is, and then the, you know, then uh, Stein's right arm is a little more in, you can't see it all because of the car door, but this is this is how he's laid out. And you know, I'd never heard it before. And you know, when he told me about it, and I think he thought he was the first person to think about it because he just, you know, he's not a big internet guy, he's an artist, but I did search the internet and I've seen maybe 10, 12 years ago, you know, a couple of people in the internet had put thrown that out there before that they felt that this could be Paul Stein. Uh, and it, it was represented by the skeleton. And, and when I talked about it with him, I told him, yeah, that's been put out there before, but no one's ever really done a good model of it or really illustrated it. And that's the main reason I wanted to do this video, because I do believe he was uh, Zodiac was trying to uh, portray Paul Stein as a skeleton. And now if you look at the legs, the legs are curled up, the feet are touching. And this is going to be opposite, because if you look at Stein's body here and, you know, you can you know, it, it's, I guess it's safe to assume his feet are in the driver's side floorboard and they're, and they're twisted like that. But if you look at the card the right way up and you open it, the legs are going to be uh, switched to the opposite side. So it's not exactly how Stein is laying because the feet are going to be swapped over. And the reason for that is just the design of the card itself. If you had done it with the legs where they really should have been, it would have screwed up the whole flow of the Halloween card as you opened it up. Uh, when you see the whole thing laid out, like, let me put this one back just to, so the legs here on the right would have actually been over here. So you could see how that's going to, you know, you're going to run out of space and it's just graphically not going to be correct. So it's, it's kind of just like a reverse on glass of, uh, of Paul Stein. So what he surmises is possibly there's another photograph showing exactly how Paul Stein's legs were making it like this, where the two feet are touching, uh, the knees kind of touching the the uh, the bone down here by the ankle and possibly someone gave Paul, uh, sorry, the Zodiac, a photograph of how exactly Paul Stein's legs were. And he said, maybe Paul Avery. Paul Avery could have certainly gotten a hold of anything the police had back then. He was a crime reporter. He knew all the cops. He's going to have access to that stuff. Obviously, the card, the Halloween card was written to Paul Avery. And he could just something he could have gotten. And I'm truly and I talked to somebody else I know uh, recently who knows this case really well and even put out to me that they think Avery was probably helping the Zodiac to some extent, not involved in the murders, but just like the Zodiac was saying, hey, I've, I've selected you to be the messenger of a lot of this stuff. 
you're getting a lot of viewers for your paper and uh, I'm going to give you some inside stuff, but you got to give me some stuff back. And I think Avery didn't disclose all that. Uh, I don't know if he knew who the Zodiac was, probably not, but I think he was doing some things for him and that's why he got the slow boat to China letter. That's why he was singled out with the, with the Halloween card and why when Paul Avery's interviewed at the Marina where he lived in the boat, he doesn't seem, you know, right after this Halloween card was sent, of course, there's a veiled threat to Paul Avery in the card. And uh, he doesn't seem too scared about it because it seems like Avery is, you know, having communications with the Zodiac that he hasn't put out there. That's kind of my belief and what a couple other people talked to said it's definitely plausible that Avery was sharing some information back to the Zodiac. And maybe that's how he had a, a, a perfect, a better photograph showing where Stein's legs were. And then he gets that photograph. And from that, he gets the outline of the skeleton. And uh, he poses it like Paul Stein. And then, like I said, it gets reversed. So the legs aren't really where they should be because of the design of the card. But everything else is there. If you can look at the, you know, the left hand is really close. The uh, right hand is kind of turned in just like Stein's. I mean, that's just a little too much to just to just write off. So I think looking at this, I think he's on to something. Now, let me show you the model that, uh, that the artist made. And this will blow your mind. This is amazing. This is an exact cutout from the Zodiac Halloween card that was made into a 3D model uh, laying on the, you know, the, the bench seat. This, this shows how Stein's legs would have been the hands coming out, the head coming out of the, you know, by the, where the cab door is open and you can see, you know, the, here's the hands, here's the legs like as they're twisted up. And this is an exact taken off of a, of a, of a one dimensional card made into a 3d skeleton. I mean, look at the, look at the, the, you know, the, the thought that went into this thing. This is awesome. And yeah, he says, uh, Anna, those, those loopy ribs on the skeleton can be found in some medieval paintings during the black death. Yes. And I think that, I think the Zodiac was, was pretty dark, but this is just stunning to see a 3d model of the skeleton from the card. And here's the, Here's how the drawing is on the left. And this is the this is the 3D skeleton that was made out of the, out of the drawing. So you can see how close that is, the ribs, the feet. So I am a believer that that's Paul Stein. I really am. I don't I, 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 it's just too close. And then there's the there's the seat and looks really just ominous with the zodiac. I mean, this was done by metal cuz uh, this uh, Jason's a metal worker. He's a tattoo artist, a freehand artist, and he see thing he sees things as an artist does. And I thought, "Wow, when I saw these things it really drove it home to me that 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 the zodiac was portraying Paul Stein. I just I don't see any other way of looking at it. And this model is just just amazing. There you have it again, sticking out hands uh legs so i've never seen a photograph showing the, the exact position of, of paul stein's legs uh post-mortem in the cab but they, it looks right to me especially here because he's laying over the seat and i also don't believe the zodiac moved paul stein that's bullshit I, there's nothing to really prove that i think um gene quasar does a great job of de just destroying that myth that the zodiac would have moved stein's body and you know, the zodiac was interested in getting that piece of that shirt so i don't know why he would move his body back upright um, you know, I read what Qua Quasar wrote about that, and I don't believe the Zodiac would have really needed to do that. I think he was just interested in getting at the time and getting that uh, that piece of Paul Stein's bloody shirt because he was going to mail it in later. But this is just incredible. This is this is such an awesome way of laying that out and, and showing you know Stein as laid out here on the Halloween card. But like I said, this was all done by the Zodiac, added to the card. I mean, look at the legs. That's just, you know, it's just amazing over the legs. And then, like I say, we're going to put out some stuff about what these not, what these, um, what these eyes in the tree mean. Of course, you can see on the left, this is how the card came. But this, these all equal, these will line up with the 340 cipher, these four. And so will these five. They will line up to different letters in the decoded 340 cipher that do say something. It doesn't reveal the Zodiac's identity. I'm not going there. That's not coming. Uh, that's not where we're going with this stuff. It's just more the mindset and the abilities is where we're going with the Zodiac. Drafting, art, uh, detail. 
drafting art and detail. That's where we're going and just showing this stuff. And, and just showing this is really drives it home to people. Cause I know someone asked earlier if they did, cause they didn't really know. I don't really know all of them in that. Well, sometimes I have to think of what came on the card, what didn't, uh, especially the dripping pen card that looks like there's really detailed, tiny little drawings inside the drip the, on the actual card on the dripping pin card. But here shows you Zodiac added this. He added all these eyes. He added these eyes and these eyes, these eyes, and these eyes will line up to two sections of the 340. These are going to line up to something else. These other eyes here on the right. It, and I would I can say this, he doesn't mind it, and, and no one give it away. Somebody, I know one person on here has a clue, maybe, but that is a it is a uh has to do with the stars, has to do with the stars and uh a particular order of stars that heavily influenced the zodiac that, that's being explained to me. And it's uh, something that's pretty, pretty buried as far as uh, uh, astronomy goes. This uh, the, uh, so a particular alignment of stars that, that that these make, these four eyes make, and is repeated a lot over the different zodiac correspondence, and also corresponds to the 340 because uh, it is definitely an astronomy influenced zodiac had. And uh, it's really a dip, it's really a hidden one too. So it shows you that the, whoever the zodiac was, it definitely had a deep knowledge of astronomy. And there's no way around it. it there's no way around it. The zodiac could draft, and the zodiac was definitely into astronomy, and and the stars. And there's a particular order of stars that he liked, and this pattern repeats over in different things, including the Halloween card and other things that the zodiac did. And you will see that. Uh, coming out soon. So this is just one of the things rolling out, like, you know, definitely not the first people to, to uh, propose that, that was Paul Stein. But now when you see the models, you can kind of see how that is. Uh, I, I don't know why the Zodiac wrote out 14, uh, you know, a T-E-N instead of 14. It kind of plays along with the, the, the play on words. Uh, of course, there's 14 out on the outside of the card. There's 14 inside of the card. And uh, the 14 we think or he thinks he's telling me uh, lines up with the position of the symbols on the 340 and you count those symbols uh diagonally and it will get you to to uh to the number 14 symbol and also the number 41 you know some people on the halloween card think that, that he's referring to pi uh backward with the 14 backwards or the 14th victim but uh we think that the 14 is pointing towards the number the symbol number in the 340 cipher is where the 14 is going and it makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, so it could be his brand said it could be because he killed 14s. I, actually he did. Yeah, that's true. He did. They were teenagers. Uh, definitely could have meant that. And then also you have this symbol here, which they call the, uh, you know, the one that could have been from red rider from the cattle brand that you hear a lot. And, the guy I'm working with, Jason, believes this actually is a reference to the movie Lord of the Flies. And from what I'm seeing, that's mind blowing. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to see some influence from the Lord of the Flies in the Zodiac. And actually L for that, F for flies. And I've also seen people like on Richard Grinnell's site say that this could be L and then the four dots, four for four, and then F for 14. Look for 14. Well, 14 is already there. Uh, you got 14 here, and then you also have 14 on the outside of the card. So you really don't need to hit that again. But uh, I'm I'm really buying into a lot of this stuff that he has. This could be L for Lord of the Flies. We know that Zodiac had so many influences, but there's definitely some that are in Lord of the Flies and where this is going with some of the some of the space constellation stuff but there those the model again i'm i'm pretty sold that that's paul stein uh, just that's just and it was in sending a message to paul avery uh you know don't get out of line because look what happened to the cab driver you know the whole thing could have been uh, is a message to avery you know he did call out the zodiac kind of implied he might have been gay or something and they think well that's why the zodiac uh broke with couples and did a single killing of a, of a single male because he was, Avery was trying to insinuate maybe he's attacking the women and the, you know, and the man, the men, you know, the men with the women, cause he might be gay or something like that. I've heard that proposed before, but uh, who knows, but I definitely like where this is going. I love this model. Like I said, there's going to be more coming out with the constellations. 
some other influences, the hood at Berryessa, some origins for that, which are really interesting that I've never seen or thought before. Like I said, I don't, I never gotten heavy into the ciphers or the, uh, the specific correspondences or the meanings of it. I, you know, I stick to, you know, my research, which is, which is out, out there and well documented, but I love this stuff too. And I love being able to, uh, to be the first one to see it because I just think it's great. So, you know, we'll leave this to, to people to decide. But, you know, there you have that 3D model. There's Stein's you know, body with the legs crossed. So who knows? Maybe Avery was giving this stuff up. Uh, you know, the message from the card plus 14 could. But then why 14 for what it's worth? Yeah, uh, we think that, the, that it, 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 the, the 14 is calling out different uh, symbols from the 340 cipher. The, the way you can add that up and break it up into three different parts is is where is where the 14s are going and the 41 backwards so you know, definitely do that again so here's the outside of the card there's that symbol again with the z the four dots like he's telling me he thinks that's for lord of the flies could be and then of course paul averly everybody has a theory on where, where you know why zodiac added the ly i have my own personal favorite and it's just it's just uh just something I came up with because obviously Paul Avery was the director of student assemblies at Bakersfield junior college. And I think he went to that junior college with the Zodiac and uh, the L Y is simply for assembly uh, assembly with L Y. And I think he just added it because he knew him from Bakersfield. So I might be wrong about that. I just like that <laughs> explanation for the, for the L Y and you know, who knows, this could be, uh, I know Peter Ackerman I've talked about before the Arthur Leon stuff thinks that this symbol is from ruins, the, the runes. And uh, you can kind of make that symbol out of the runes. And uh, you know, he thinks that that's it. And you know, some stuff like that. Yeah. I shot him in the head, I think above the ear. And uh, yeah, Paul Stein was shot in the head in his cab. Uh, I think it was a, a, above his right ear, not the back of the head, but about, about the right ear. So I don't even know if they know for sure if the Zodiac was in the front seat or in the back seat and reached over. Definitely points to, I, I would think, more of a right-handed person to do that, uh, you know, which doesn't help Arthur Lee Allen's cause much because he was predominantly left-handed. But, you know, I think that, I think that's that's definitely where we're going. I think that's Stein. I think there's no doubt about it. If you see this upside down in the hands, thumb not sticking out. And like I said, this was made by the Zodiac. This, these ribs were drawn by the Zodiac. The red mask, I think that's a movie reference and not uh, from Red Rider. Because Red Rider was a bandana. We think this was more red mask. And I'm going to get into more of that later. But this is all drawn. Look at the skill that that took. I mean, it's not anatomically correct. It's not supposed to be. But it is a pretty good rendition if you're just drawing this this is somebody that, that had some ability and is using a light table there's no doubt about that this is a light table was used to cut it out on clear acetate or uh or you know like you did you know in, in, in school where the teacher had the overhead projector and you had the uh, glossy film and you could draw over it and then you cut it out and then you have your framework and then you go inside and make this this little detail like the hands and the bones so Definitely had some skill level. I don't know why that part of Averly is underlined. I've often often thought of that because, of course, you get the CH right under it. What what do you think of when you think of CH? <laughs> I mean, that's just me, though. I have no idea, but I've thought of that before. That's why I thought it was funny because under that line, you know, you got the R under there, too. But I see, you know, but right in the middle, though, you have that CH. So, you know where my brain's going when I see the CH, but I, I don't know. But it's interesting because I don't think the Zodiac did anything. I don't think the Zodiac did anything that wasn't intentional. I think they're all they were all meant to be something here. So, you know, the Apollo, the Apollo stamp. Of course, this is, you know, having to do with the heavens, the stars. I think the Zodiac was heavily influenced by the stars and a particular uh, constellation was uh, the Zodiac was definitely into. Yeah, the Apollo eight. And he was really into that. She says, oh, do you think the wrists are limp because possibly Paul Stein was was feminine a bit? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think I think it's just drawn that way because that's the way his hands are after he's dead. I, I don't know. Paul Stein was married. He was definitely wasn't a homosexual. He was 
but uh, who knows? I mean, anything's possible. But I it definitely, to me, that, that just it, it looks like Stein. And we weren't the first people to put that out there. It's been thrown out on the internet before, even ten years ago. Someone suggested that, so it's not the first time it's been suggested that the skeleton in the in the inside of the card was representing Paul Stein as some form of message to Paul Avery, maybe to scare him, or or who knows what. But I I do believe that Paul Avery knew more that was going on. I think he was giving some information back to the Zodiac. I had another slide I was going to put up, just one of the you know one of the Avery's articles, but. Uh, you know, that's just a stunning model, and it really drives home that that I think that is Stein. Probably maybe a teacher in school kept saying his name wrong, and if Zodiac was in class with him, he could be giving him a clue or, screw, or screwing with him. That's true. Uh, teachers messed up my name all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I bet they did. <laughs> I mean, just that's just the way teachers are some days, especially if you're not acting right. Uh, talk to stuff or everything. Alan and Cheney were lovers at one point. You know what? I get that question before. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of, you know, the story of Leopold and Loeb, the two guys that did, you know, were trying to do the perfect murder and they thought they did. And then one of them left their, their eyeglasses. They killed a, 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 you know, a young boy. I don't remember. He's 12 or 13 and they were lovers. And I think one of the pair was the one that was kind of driving that relationship. And uh, similar to Leopold and Loeb on, uh, you know, could be something going on there. You know, I, I've never seen anything to indicate that Don Cheney was homosexual at all, but I've been asked that. I, you're not the first person to ask that question. I don't know. I've never seen anything like that. Obviously, Arthur Lee Allen, in, in his liking of younger children, did seem to not really differentiate much between boys and girls, from what I can tell. And definitely seemed to prefer boys, uh, but that might have been easy, you know, him to have easier access to. But I think, he, you know, he definitely went after uh, little girls. Um you know, I know that the story with Seawaters and all that, and actually the, their daughter wrote me a, a email. I'm, I'll read that on the next one. I told her I would read that on a show because I'm definitely not deleting her stuff. And uh, if she's listening, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not calling your family liars. I'm just saying how I look at those particular claims. They could believe it themselves or conflate or anything like that. I just, with the licking of the stamps, I've never seen anyone else but Don Cheney ever claim that. Okay, and unfortunately, Don Cheney. Uh, has made have, has told a lot of contradictory things. Uh, he just has. He's told a lot of co contradictory stories. His memory seems, you know, like he said, his memory gets better with age. That's not how your memory works. Your memory gets worse with age. I'm a living example of that. You just you cannot remember like you could when you were younger. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So I'm just saying that. I'm not calling it. I'm not trying to call anyone liars or start some kind of whatever going back and forth because uh, the seawater seem like good people. Uh, they have their reasons. They knew him. I didn't. And uh, that song Stranger is good. So I <laughs> uh, definitely compliment them. I like I love that song Stranger, the way he does that. And I, I don't know. He should put that song out there. I really like that song Stranger. He plays in that video about Arthur Lee Allen. I don't, I don't remember what you said about Stein's eyes being covered, but it, but yeah, the the, the uh, well, you know, we did lose the the glasses came off. They they said that that the Zodiac took Stein's glasses, but I swear there's a there's a one photograph from the uh, the Paul Stein murder scene where it it just clearly looks like the glasses are on not the street, but maybe the 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 the, the passenger floorboard in the front seat. I swear there's a photo that looks like the glasses are right there and there's like an arrow pointing to them. Maybe that's somewhere on the internet, but I thought it was always said that of course, Paul Stein's wallet was taken and we know the shirt was the, the shirt piece was taken. And then people speculate how the Zodiac was able to get that off. Did he cut it? Did he know how to tear it? Uh, you know, of course he, he sent in different pieces of that shirt and in three different, three different times he sent in a piece of that shirt. Maybe he held onto it. Stein's wallet was missing. Uh, but you know, I don't know if that represents his glasses. I'm, I'm not sure what the mask represents, but that's something that needs to be looked into for sure. Let me see. I thought I had another thing about Avery here, but I, like I said, these models are just fantastic. But like I said, there's the ego, uh, we're going to get into the astronomy of it. And the the you know what 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 in astronomy specifically that the, the the zodiac go after this this is such detail that that he was trying to get out and and, and you know show here hey Darnell how are you and and get out 
man. But yeah, talk to Supper. I've heard that question before. I have nothing to back it up, but I've been asked that before. So when I hear that, I think of the Leopold and Loeb case. They were trying to do the perfect murder together. They got caught. Uh, Alan and Cheney could have been like a Leopold and Loeb uh, type case. I, and I, I've, I've done a, a video about that before. Yeah, the models are really well done. And there's more to come. There's more to come. This is just the beginning. I just want to start getting some of this stuff out uh, about you know, the whole mosaic of Zodiac. I mean, this isn't going, trying to go towards, you know, trying to sell Alan Cheney or, or anything like that. You know, th this is just, this is coming from somebody that's not pushing any suspect. It's just how an artist is looking at some of these pieces in the big, the big picture of the influences. And, you know, for me, it's showing the abilities, uh, the artistic ability that the Zodiac had. Because like I said, that that skeleton was made by hand on the right side of the card. That's why this is such a good example here of what the Zodiac did. There's the original card, and there's what Zodiac did on the right. Uh, this is some talent. And even Gr Robert Graysmith surmised that you know, you're looking for an artist. You're looking for somebody with some artistic ability. And the drafting stuff is just, uh, it's there. This is somebody that's working with, with a set of, of nibs and, and, and can definitely do artwork. So... Definitely something to chew on, but I'll be doing more soon. And uh, we got more coming out. Like I said, the outfit at Berryessa, the constellation, the uh, God, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot more pieces to this, and it's just it's just to illustrate how big it is and how how much detail was involved in this whole thing called Zodiac. I mean, it wasn't just throw it out there and see and see this was there was so much thought and detail this is a lot of labor intensive work with your hand and and making this stuff and you know it, it has a, this artist ring to it so um dennis yeah how are you dennis this makes me think that one person mainly did the letters cards and another did the crimes it definitely it definitely reeks like a duo because it's just too big it's too i mean for one person to be able to do all of it it's just so heavy but I hate adding it, you know, if you add a third person, it's getting to, you know, you're getting out of Occam's razor, you're getting uh, where the third person could turn you in or, you know, uh, you know, it's just, it's getting a little too difficult at that point. But definitely, I think it took the work of two people. Like I, we talked about with Alan mailing the letters, the Pleasanton letter was the first, when Arthur Leon got the speeding ticket in the city of San Francisco was the first, first time in at least 14 consecutive Zodiac letters that weren't mailed from the city of San Francisco was the day that the time that Arthur Lee Allen got a speeding ticket. Then he goes out to, Ple you know, Pleasanton and mails it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's just, it's stunning. I mean, that's, that's just where it is, but definitely think that's Stein. It's just too much. And if there is a photo that showed his legs doing that, I mean, that's, that looks like a natural way that his legs would be here down in the driver's side floorboard. And here he's hanging out of the car. Hands are right. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that Stein, and it and it just drives it home when you see it in 3D like this. So I'll put that up again. But there's more to come. So definitely, I'm gonna uh, you know hopefully I'll probably have some more for the show on Saturday night. I just wanted to get this out because I was so excited about it. And then you see how that 3D model of the skeleton was made here, and then the uh, the cab seat. So that is it for now like i said with uh, lf he thinks it's lord of the flies and some other influences that'll come out soon but uh really appreciate jason for sharing this stuff it's great really excited about it and uh, gonna be more soon so stay tuned thanks for watching